okay? <laughs> Hold on. We got Wait. a little extra time. Are we taking a selfie? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, y'all need to stand up because yep. we can't stand up. Get up. <laughs> okay. Is this on? Is this on? Hello? Testing? Is this on? All right. Okay. Wait ready. a second. Wait a second. Hey, hey, hey. Is my tie okay? Okay, ready? On your count of three. And then everybody's going to, what are they going to say? Cheese? Yeah, everybody say cheese. Okay, okay. ready? One, two, two three. three. Beautiful. All right. Okay. Do you guys need to stand up once more and stretch? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, we are here again. We can't. I can't. I honestly can't believe you guys keep asking us to come back. It's hilarious. Oh, do I? Is this? I don't. That's for you. Okay. I have, I'm stuck. They do this on purpose. Yeah. My husband specifically says, "Don't give her a lapel mic because no. she'll move around." No. So. Um, no, we are back today. We're actually back. We're going to talk to you guys about a little something different. We're not going to, um, we've been going around to different places and giving our testimony and how I got saved um, from the depths of sin and uh, managed to somehow uh, make my way and, you know, change my life around um, with God's help uh, to, to, be, to become a Christian. And so um, we, we told that story here last year, and we got to tell it at IHC, and we got to tell it at GBS, and we got to tell it um, at a camp meeting. I mean, it's just God has really been so good to us, and we are just humbled, and we're thankful, and we're thankful to be back here. Amen. So we're going to go in a little bit different direction today. We're going to talk about um, some of our story a little bit, but there's a whole lot that we haven't told you. And specifically, some of the things we haven't told you have to do with everybody's favorite subject, dating and love. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's love in dating. There is. There ought to be. It worked out for us that there was. So um, we're, we're, that's what we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about so today. We're so going, we're going to remake. Remaking. Dating. Dating. I'm afraid I'm not on. Am I not on? I don't know. Am I? Is this microphone work? Is this on? Is this microphone work? Yeah. What do I need to do? Open it up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this microphone work? That's on. That's <laughs> right. on. He's Amen. On. Very All right. good. All right. Let's read some scripture. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Now, we're, we're using this scripture in a uh, unique way. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I want to apply it to dating. So bear with us as we explain this for just a moment. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12. It says there, and if one prevail against him, two, two, shall withstand him, mm -hmm. and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Let me tell you, young people, if you find the right one, and you're with them, it's a great thing. But something is greater than that, right. is when that pair is also in a threefold cord with God. God making up That's that right. third Cord. That's absolutely it's right. It's vital mm -hmm. to your relationship That's as right. dating, uh, dating people, or whatever you're doing. And marriage. Yes. And, mar and definitely and marriage. Yes, so, absolutely. All right, let's begin. I'm ready. All right, so again, we always do these disclaimers. Um, <laughs> just a few before we just, begin. Uh, just a couple disclaimers. Uh, you don't have to abide by these exact principles or rules if you uh, that we're going to share with you. We are unique people. Very. But if you want a happy marriage, you will do it. <laughs> if you want a perfect marriage, you'll do it. Yes. Amen. That's right. No, we're just teasing a little bit. But, um, but it's not that you have to do these specific things, but we are going to talk to you about principles and principles that guided what we did because um, I just I want to say we are blessed Yes. I am a blessed woman. My husband 
still takes his sermon notes out oh. and draws hearts with my name in it. See, it says Sarah with a heart around it. He just did this recently. I mean, I am a blessed woman. So you don't have to do the specifics, but if you want a perfect marriage and life, you I will. I can't get a tattoo with her, with her name <laughs> on it. I, I was thinking about a neck tattoo that no. said, Sister Durst, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> but, brother, but Brother Mitchell said no. I can't, so I'm not. There goes our Monday plans. I, I'd be tough looking, Sister Durst. Oh, come on now. Go King on. James Bible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for a review for the people, for those of you who don't quite remember. How many were here last year and heard, heard us speak? Okay, so Well, some of you, of you know then. Uh, when I met Sarah, she was an atheist, a yep. hippie atheist. Uh, just quickly in review, uh, she is my first convert. I don't suggest that you marry your first convert in every case, especially if you're in prison ministry or something like that. You might need to wait. Yes. But she came from a unique background, and we have a unique story. We shared our testimony of how she got right with the Lord last year, and mm -hmm. Brother Matt Malloy asked that we do a part two of that, so we thought we'd talk about our dating process after she got saved. Mm -hmm. That's right. So. So the first thing uh, that we're going to talk to you guys about today is um, something that's going to be a little bit hard for your, some of you guys to understand. Some of you people might have a hard time with this. I had a hard time with this. But it's good advice, and it's made our marriage what it is today. And that is the first thing. Do not rush do not rush. The thing of this is, is this, the, the principle here is remaking. And it takes a whole lot of time to make ourselves into the image of what God wants us to be. Sure. And it takes time in a dating relationship to get to know that other person. And that is of critical importance. If you're going to make it and if your marriage is going to make it, you have got to figure out who it is that God wants you to be first, who does God want me to be, how am I supposed to be for God, and then who on earth is this crazy person that I am thinking about linking my life up with? I maybe asked myself that once or twice. Okay. Today, she asked herself yeah. that. <laughs> so, you have to understand, guys, we dated for... Two, three... Four, five, and a half years. And a half. <laughs> we five, dated for five and a half, half years. Long, long, <laughs> long years. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I know, I know, because we were we met um, on the tail end of college. So I was twenty one, twenty one or twenty two. I can't. Rec quite recall. Things get blurry the older you get. Don't you, give it any specifics <laughs> as far as numbers. Right. Okay. We're at a youth convention. Oh, well, you know. So we dated for five and a half years, and um, we started dating later. But again, you have to understand, I was not a Christian when we first right. started dating. Um, I got saved very soon after we began dating. So essentially, old boy needed to be sure that I was going to well, stick by the stuff. Let me just say, when you are dating somebody that's newly saved, you do not want to enter a marriage with somebody that got boy or girl religion. You understand what I'm saying? There's some that have gotten tied up and linked up with and married to folks that got religion because somebody looked good, you know? And there's nothing wrong with looking good. I mean, Amen. Uh, we want to look good. Shower, Absolutely. comb your hair, wear deodorant, look good. Look good for Jesus. Amen. But that boy and girl religion, you, you, you get real spiritual because she looks good. <laughs> or you get real spiritual because he's so handsome. And he'll, he'll be there. 
So, so just be careful with that. But essentially, when, you, when you're dating for a, for a time, we're going to say, and, and it needs to be a substantial amount of time. A half a decade. Just you know, at least. Our, ch <laughs> our two daughters, um, just those of you wondering, we do have two children, two daughters, Ada and Cora. They will be dating their future husbands for at least 7 to 15 years. Amen. So, I mean, it's fine. I've already started practicing. If, you see, if you're a teenage boy <laughs> here t this week and I'm you caught me. I'm sorry for you. If you caught me glaring at you. He's just practicing. I'm just practicing and glaring at teenage boys. <laughs> Our girls are going to be teenagers in about six to seven years. I'm just practicing on you. Just mean mugging Teddy just for the fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but essentially, even uh, you, when you're dating somebody for a long time, you, it helps you to grow into that person that God wants you to be, number right. one. And number two, it serves a second purpose. And that second purpose is you know what <laughs> you're getting. Right. There is time to test out what kind of person they're going to be. How are they going to act when times get tough? What is going on when things aren't going great at their house? How do they treat other people? How do they treat their parents, their children, and, or ch other children, not their children? They shouldn't have children. <laughs> The children in the church. That's what I meant to say. But you do. You want to test all those things out. You know what you're getting. So, for example, I knew. Well, well there's, let me just say, there's, when we got married, there oh. weren't surprises. No. He is exactly the same man that he was when we started dating. There's no changing anybody. Well, I've just gotten better. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> like a cheese, an aged cheese. Um, there is just, you know, so let me just tell you. That's not in the notes. If it annoys you now, if it annoys you now, it's going to annoy you even more when you get married. Yes, it will. Now, this is not to say... This is not to say that God's marvelous grace can't come in and work in your life because he can and he can continually remake you into something else. But there is such a thing as how you were raised and your personalities, as Brother Mitchell said this morning, so an inheritance that you have, some things about you that are just who you are. Right. And so I absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, knew that when I was marrying this one, I knew that I was getting a conservative. Check. Right wing, check. Old fashioned, amen. King James only, amen. Preacher man, amen. There and was no question about that. Right, and I knew I was getting a new Christian, mm -hmm. raised by hippies. Uh huh. And there was a high likelihood of a lot of kale and organic foods, <clears throat> <laughs> and and vitamins I can't pronounce. That's right. And you know what? There are. It's true. They're good for you. You should take them, vitamins. I, I, he still doesn't take them. I am 62 years old. <laughs> That's, doesn't he look amazing? <laughs> it's all that kale. I've been preserved, embalmed. <laughs> <laughs> so I also knew that I was getting somebody who was sold out and was not going to compromise on anything ever like wasn't ever gonna ask for directions wasn't ever gonna let Siri that woman on his uh -uh. phone tell I changed him it to a male's to voice do. on my phone I, I didn't want some woman tell me where to go <laughs> I talked to Siri I'm like brother Siri tell me where <laughs> Brother Siri, tell me how to get to the health food store. <laughs> Pick up some fenugreek. <laughs> what? Well, it's just a drug. Something herb. I eat, probably eat. It's herb. Anyhow. <laughs> so what else here? Let's see here. What, uh, what did I know I was getting? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I lost my place here. Well, mm -hmm. Where am I at, sweetie? It's number four, dear. <laughs> right there. Don't I tell did. me what to do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is a good point. I knew, because she wrote it, uh, <laughs> I knew I was getting someone that questioned everything, which strengthened and stretched my brain to explain why we believe, as holiness people, what we believe. I had to, I had to come into the relationship knowing, she's like, why? That's so weird. 
Uh, Skirts. More people do that than just our church. I was like, yeah, you should come to IHC. There's thousands. <laughs> but I tell you what, no it idea. really helped my spirituality and my grounding to have someone that tested, and not, not to be just, you know, a dork. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but just that would just say from time to time, explain to me exactly why it is what we do and where's that in the Bible? Help me understand. And that is steel on steel. Yes. So the sharpening, and it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you, if here's the thing, kids. If you, um, it, we're saying don't rush because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to know who you are. You need to be grounded and settled before you even think about entering into a serious relationship with somebody because that's not doing your soul any favors. Right. That's not doing her soul any favor or his soul any favors. You need to be grounded and settled, and that does take time. Once you enter into a relationship with somebody, it takes time to get to know that person and to understand who it is that you are getting married to because like we said earlier ain't gonna change even if you want them to they're not gonna change you know you all need to go out there if you haven't you can't buy it today but you need to at some point that it is not when it is not a Sunday Amen. you need to get that book from brother Rollin Mitchell and you need to read it you need to read both the front and the upside down back back you need to do this read this way and then flip it and read it the other way because he's got some very specific things in there, especially when it comes to thinking about if somebody's going to change and what you're going to have to deal with. So if that person that you're dating or you're thinking about dating is not grounded and is not settled, and if that person is not helping you become closer and better for Jesus, they got to go. Dump. You just need to say but goodbye. Dump them. I don't have time for this. Be like, girl, yeah, no. Nah. Boy, no thank you. Okay? Because there is nothing more important than your future family and yes. getting those kids to heaven. That's no, and yourself and those, your family. Number one, I, I mean, I can go on about this forever because it, it takes time. Did but you, I won't. Do you want me to sit down? No, no, that's right. okay. That's okay. Don't sit down. Okay, the second thing we want to talk to you about. <laughs> now, now, you thought that the don't rush one was hard to listen to. Here's another one. Okay, ready? Oh, dear. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> Don't touch. Oh. I'm going to spell it. We can. We're married. D-O-N apostrophe T. T-O-U-C-H. Don't touch. Now, that, I know that is a hard thing to hear because you just... He's just so handsome. <laughs> and she's just so pretty. <laughs> no dude ever says it like I that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so after, after I got saved, they thought it was a really great idea. This is, this is how, I mean, this is how to keep somebody. You, want, you find a new convert in your church, this is just a bonus. You find a new convert in your church, you want to keep them committed and serving, give them a Sunday school class right. or a bus ministry. So we gave her both. <laughs> both of them. They're like, oh, you want to be a teacher? We got some children that need you. Okay, so they, and they just and threw me in. They didn't give me them. They didn't sit down and tell me about the manual or what was appropriate or what, you know. I, they just said, you just need, we need you. Help. Help. Yep. And so I did. And so we were involved in a lot of things at the church so together. I, I had youth group. I had um, youth chapel. Mm -hmm. I had a Sunday school bus route. Mm -hmm. So a couple months after we'd begun dating, um, I went over to Sarah's apartment and knocked on the door and asked her to come out of that apartment. I didn't go in. I asked her to come out and uh, called you know, out. I called her out of the apartment. <laughs> I did not go in. I went. Uh, I called her out. Come out. And, and I explained holy. to her that these situations at the church were places uh, were things of leadership, and I was going to be the new youth pastor, and so I ain't kissing, hugging, touching you ever, ever, until further notice, because we have to set the standard. Some of you are like, what? You know, I'm going to tell a little story on him. 
he actually used the, this, this, this rationale with me. Because, you know, again, come understand, I came from an unchurched background. I had been saved. I had been walking with the Lord for a couple of months, and I was just like, um, you're not going to hold my hand anymore? What? You know, you know, it's I was not like, because I didn't want to. She I has just, very soft hands. With not nary a paint on them. Amen. Just saying. Um, <laughs> so... That's not in the notes either. I'm just full of bonuses. Um, but I'm telling you, he, so I didn't, quite, I didn't quite get it, all right? You know, and let me just t- say this. You don't have to get everything. You just have to do it sometimes. I mean, that's just the way. We don't always understand that which the Lord is asking us to do. Okay, I, don't, I didn't understand everything. But I was just like, well, I, I, just, I guess I just got to do it because... That's what I think that the Lord wants us to do. And so, um, yeah, he, he told me that, and I was just like, well, okay. So you there, know. there was a period of there, no hand-holding. Yeah, yeah. And no the, smooching. None of it. Not a single one. And, no hugging. But there was, there was an exception. Let me just tell you, after we'd gotten into this phase of our relationship where we was just like, we are going to test. I mean, we're really going to test our relationship, take the physicality out of it, and trust God to grow us as a relationship without that aspect. Mm-hmm. I know that's a radical thing to do, but it, it worked. There was a, a, a level of purity about our relationship that existed on a, an intellect level, a spiritual level, that we just didn't fall back on the crutch of, well, she, she kisses good, you know. <laughs> I, I, I know that's kind of a funny thing to say, but I wonder if we get too focused on that aspect. Mm-hmm. And I hope I'm not getting in any trouble. I can't even see Brother Matt Mullo. There, there he is. There he is, okay. I hope I'm not getting in any trouble with this being too specific here. But just being careful yeah. and find out, do I really like this person because they look good? Well, she does look good. I like the way she looks. But... So but, nice. <laughs> do I like this, per- this person because... They hug good. They snuggle good. Or, or, do, or do I like them because I, I really appreciate your mind. <laughs> <laughs> he just knows the things to say. <laughs> there, I, we do have, we, there was, now we have to be, we have to be honest. There was an exception. There was an exception to, to the, the no touching. No physica- physical touching to rule. rule. And that was. We would pray for days just like this. When there was Snow an ice storm. and ice. Because I, 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 you know, go pick her up. Knocked on her apartment. I asked her to come out. I'm like, baby, it's snowy and icy outside. Do you need help to your car? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> We spent more time dating on frozen li- lakes, streams, creeks. I just needed to be helped across. I, I, I tell you what, I was always a jump, but I, there's more ice over there, sweetie. We just got- <laughs> It'd take us, uh, 150, uh, 150 feet would take us a half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour across. We took baby steps as yeah. we were crossing the ice. Well, we literally, we took baby steps. I guess that was the whole theme of our relationship. <laughs> Five and a half years, baby steps. Yeah. Um, so essentially, uh, it, you know, that, that, is, that is funny. But, but uh, we want you guys to really so think about this. So if you see us this. stalled out in the parking lot today, <laughs> it's just we're going just real enjoying slow. each other. It's just, <laughs> just, come, just don't worry. We're not, we're not in any critical <laughs> Hurry. situation. <clears throat> Go ahead. <laughs> The thing to remember about, about this funny stuff, though, I mean, the thing to remember is that, essentially, I want you to really, really think about this and think about the implications of this, because I'm not going to spell it out completely, but I am going to say that you are or you will be dating someone's future husband or wife. It may be yours. It may be your future husband or, wa- or wife, but it may not be. And so you need to be very, very careful in that relationship because that person will be married to someone someday, most likely. And you might have to go to church with them. Exactly. So you need to be careful about this. 
This is, I, I mean, it's funny and I can all honestly that. say I have not kissed anyone else in this room. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, but again, you don't have to ascribe like 100%, you know, but thought needs to be given to purity and thought needs to give, be given to boundaries. And let me just tell you, the more boundaries that you have now in a dating relationship, the better your marriage is going to be. Yes. Period. Like, like she said, not everyone has to ascribe to this carefulness as far as physical contact between a dating couple. You don't have to. You don't, you don't have to. You don't, you don't have to. That, it's a school of thought. It's just, but would you give it some thought? I mean, and, if you, and if, you, if you do ascribe to it, you'll be really happy. So, you know, if you want to be really happy, just listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, I, I do want to share a little funny story on Andrew, though. Uh, the, so you might be wondering, like, how long did you not touch her and all that? You know, it was five years. No. Yes, it was. It was a little longer. Okay, it was five years and, like, four months. You know, we dated five and a half years. So, I mean, it was, it was about five years of this, you know, praying for ice, you know, so we could just <laughs> hold hands just once. Um, but so when the next time that we touched was on the day that we got engaged. So I knew something was up because Andrew said, hey, Sarah, do you want to go? We live in central Illinois. We're about two hours from Chicago. We, we love to go to Chicago. It's just a lot of fun. Still do it. And he said, hey, Sarah, you want to go to Chicago? And I was like, uh, with you? And he, really, he was like, yeah, let's, I mean, you know, long, you know, just it'll be fun. It'll be a day trip. It was a day trip. And I was like, okay, you know, so we got in the car. And, and then when we got there, he was, we would walk around to the shops, and I'd look at something. I'd be like, oh, this is nice. And he'd be like, do you want that? I'll buy that for you. <laughs> now, old boy is cheap. <laughs> so I knew something was going on. I was, Good, goodwill right here. Right that's here. absolutely right. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? He's not. $1.99. <laughs> And so I was just like, what on earth is happening? eBay. <laughs> Stop it. I said, what is on earth is happening here? And then sure enough, he's like, let's go walk by the lake. And I was like, this is weird. He is not into like walking and nature and things. So, so anyway, so we go out and we sit on the, this is like they have a concrete embankment that goes out to Lake Michigan. And we were just sitting there chatting. And then, you know, we're just sitting there. And then all of a sudden, I'm hold on, hold on, there. hold and on. And then I look over. I had purchased an affordable, non-jewelry-looking, <laughs> holiness-approved wristwatch. I'm not even wearing the, it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so I'm sitting there, and then he, like, gets on his knee, gets on his knee, and he's like, all of the loving things, all of the loving things, Will you marry me? And I got so tickled that I just started laughing. And you know, I'm going, <laughs> And you know? I am just like, <laughs> wait, you, you can't just laugh at somebody. It was so sweet, though. I mean, when I get, you know, when I, I get spent really happy, I spent 99 on this rich wash. <laughs> And so finally I said, and he looks at me and he goes, is that a yes? And I said, yes. And I was like, kiss me. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> he planted one right on me in the middle, or on the edge of the lake there. So, but that was the next time. I, I planted it on you, not on the edge right. of the lake. <laughs> that's true, that's, that is true, on me. Oh, right here. This is so embarrassing. Is it really? It is really embarrassing. I'm. Oh. Am I red? Yeah. yeah. Woo. On me. Let's stop keep talking about kissing. Don't do it. Yeah. Last thing. Last Unless thing. Unless you're with the lake. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last, last, last thought this here. This is it. This is it. This is the last thought. And this is, this is the most important part. So we've talked about um, this, ish, this idea of remaking dating because the world will tell you dating needs to look so much different than what we're talking about. It does we are, not, all these, you know, goals, hashtag 
relationship goals. Ugh. And there are these snapshots of weird people doing ducky faces or the each other. Or the like constant need to be posting a photo. Like if, if you don't have a relationship photo on the social media like once a week, people are like, what's happening? <laughs> like it's not your business what's happening. It's, you know. It might be a good idea that you not change your relationship status immediately mm -hmm. after you start dating someone. Just constantly have that one that says it's complicated. You know, just that's always what it is. That's it's still our relationship day. It is. It's complicated. <laughs> just keep it like that. But the third advice, so remaking dating. So we're suggesting to you, don't rush into anything. Right. Take time to become who God wants you to be and to get to know the person. Don't consider purity. Don't touch. If, if that is something that is important to you, I mean, you need to make, pure, make purity. And, Set uh, boundaries. Yes, it's got to be a focus. do not cross the boundaries. Absolutely. And then the last point is about, about remaking it completely, and it is dating around. Other people. That is correct. Dating around other people. See what we did there? <laughs> it's called wordplay. <laughs> Date around. Others. <laughs> okay, so dating does not need to be a, like a solitary, like just you and your boyfriend or girlfriend. You can spend too much. Now At listen to me. You can spend too much time alone. Mm -hmm. You sure you can. can. You can get too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then so it turns into a bad thing. And then it's an embarrassing thing. And then it's a situation and then you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You need to date around other people. That's right. Be present as a couple with other people around you. Yep. It's a good thing. And the only reason why I think that our relationship worked, because as when we've given our testimony, we talked about, you know, my background, you know, just completely in sin and finding a preacher boy of all things, you know, the only reason that our relationship worked is because of the support system that we had. Our pastor took a vested interest in our relationship. He would invite us to his house of an evening to just sit and talk with us. Um, he would encourage us to go do things for the church together with a group. They gave us responsibilities, like we said, a Sunday school class, and working with the teenagers. So our level of accountability was very high. And I'm not saying that you need to be an assistant pastor at your church in order for, you know, but you need a, a, an accountability group, people that you trust, that you know have your best interest in mind, and you need to include those people in your relationship. Tell them what you're thinking. I'm talking about your mama. Because your mama is going to have a real good idea, boys, if that girl is a good girl or right. not. Your daddy, and let me tell you, girls, your daddy is going to know. Because if daddy don't like him, you need to kick boy to the curb. I don't care if he's cute and you love him. You need to listen to your daddy. Okay? I'm getting real I will just, this is serious. I mean, I'm going to go mama on y'all. <laughs> you need to listen to your mamas and your daddies. Okay? Um, let, you need let to. Let me just say, the, the, the way your girlfriend Looks, the way your boyfriend looks, dresses, all that's important. It is. If you wouldn't take them to the home church, and you take them always, you always, you always take them to a different church. Now you're meddling. I may be, but I'm just saying, it's important. It is. If you're not, if you're too embarrassed to have your boyfriend or girlfriend come to you at your home church, seat, you have your home pastor take a look at them. Mm -hmm. mm, dump them. I will tell y'all one story. So the yep. first time my husband uh, invited me to hit, to our to the church that we go to in Ur in Urbana, Illinois, it was so it was it was amazing. So I let's just I, I'll say this. Just I describe just describe what you what you look like. Uh, not like I do. No, maybe a little. I mean, I had the same face and stuff. You know, same, same height hands. and all that. Same unpainted hands and you know things. Um, and so <laughs> we get. You know, we we. I tell you what. <laughs> we. I was where I will never forget what I was wearing because I loved it so much. I mean, I had very, 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 very short hair. Very short hair. I mean, like probably about like Teddy's or his buddy's yeah. here. Well, I mean, no, short. it was a little longer than that, but yeah, Look, basically. It, it was short. Now, again, I had only been saved for like a little bit, so there had not Just been a couple weeks. There had not been time for my hair to grow. Um, Bless her heart, she called all around town trying to find extensions. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? 
Well, I just, you know, Isn't I tried. Isn't that interesting? I was how trying. God, I just, I just. <laughs> You're getting blessed over that. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. But she was, I mean, that's just how good God is. I didn't have to tell her about hair, dresses, or anything like that. God just showed her. But the preacher told her, said, don't worry about all that. God will grow your hair. And I'm telling you, my preacher said, I have never seen hair grow on a woman like that. I mean, hair on her head. <laughs> so anyway... And so I, I, I will never forget. I told this story the last time that I was here, but it just bears repeating. I walk into that church, and I was wearing a suede leather coat. It was like yellowish orange. And it had a fur collar on it that like looked like something Queen Elizabeth from like, you know, 1611 would have been wearing. You know, she was like big, you know, and... I just kind of was, that's just who I was, you know, and I walked in. Kind of looked like a coyote that had been hit by a car. <laughs> walked in, sat down, and Megan, his little sister. You need to speak at the, the microphone. His little sister, Megan, at the time was about 11 years old. And Megan was probably sitting right around in here, and I'd come down the back aisle, and I think I'd, I think I went and sat with you. I can't quite remember, yeah. but Megan was sitting next to her friend, Ashley. And Ashley leans over to Megan and goes, Megan. That's Andrew's new girlfriend. And Megan, sweet little 11-year-old Megan, turns back around, looks at me, looks at Ashley and goes, my brother would never date anyone like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Megan. <laughs> it's such a funny thing. Um, but er from early on in our relationship, Andrew made a point of, of bringing me around people in the church, because I didn't, I didn't have anybody in the church. That I, I didn't go to church. So um, that we, were, we would talk to our pastor, we would talk to our friends, talk to our family um, about this other person, and we included other people. I had, I had girl, um, lots of girls in the church who I became friends with, and, and I would, I, since I didn't necessarily have a Christian family to talk to about the things of the Lord, I would talk to these girls and I would just ask them, you know, like, well, what do you think about, about Andrew and this whole relationship? And they would give me wise counsel because I knew I trusted their judgment. They weren't going to lead me astray. So we just want to make sure and remind you guys that you need to have a support system in place. You need to date around other people, include your pastor, your mom, your dad in a relationship. Because if you are afraid to take that girl or that boy home with you and show them to your parents and introduce them, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That is a big problem, and you need to and you can, think long and hard and about that. And you can ask your pastor. I mean, I hope you can ask your pastor. Should, do you think this person's, you know, somebody I should be dating? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good barometer. Preacher? What do you think? I think she looks good. What do you think about? I mean, you shouldn't ask. No, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> What do you think about this relationship? Yeah, should I be, should this be somebody that I, that I want to When date? is our time up? It's up now. Is it? Okay. Yeah, you got to finish up. Well, um, to seek that godly counsel, I, I, will, I, will, I will close with this. We, we don't do um, play acting up here. This is who we are. You come to our house. <laughs> Jeremy Fuller can tell you he's been to our house many times several times. Um, this is not an act for youth convention or IHC. We really do have this time together that's good. I mean, this is... It's really fun. It's good to have a lady like this at my side. It makes me laugh. That embarrasses the tar out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll close with this. Uh, it's been several years ago. We were in the old house, the first little house that we bought. I have a friend that I, I do work with, and um, he's, his name's Chris. I hope he's not watching because Chris is a gossip. And, <clears throat> and he, uh, I accidentally, during a, Sarah and I sometimes don't see eye to eye, but then I show her, true reason and logic, and she comes my direction. 
<laughs> not Renee, you know, come on. Anyway. It's, in two, 2017, he told me, what, you want to know what Andrew learned in 2017? He said, Sarah, I want to tell you. In 2017, you want to know what I learned? That you are always right. Yeah! <laughs> not Except really. Except when you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this. So Sarah and I were having um, an intense moment of fellowship. You know what I'm saying? We were arguing. We don't argue, we fight. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> usually the sheriff comes by. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's, that's, that's just kidding, that stuff. But we were having an intense moment of fellowship. We were upstairs. Door was closed. The little girls were in bed. Uh, we were having this discussion. And I happened to pocket dial Chris, my friend. The gossip. And I was, had looked down at the phone, and I noticed that we were a good 10, 12 minutes into <laughs> the pocket dial, and he's one that would not, would not be discreet and go, oh, goodness, and hang up. He's like, no, this is great. <laughs> Listen then. And do you know he went around town? Because he's a gossip, you know. Telling people. Sarah and Andrew Durst, I heard him argue. He said it was one of the sweetest things I'd ever heard. <laughs> he said they didn't yell. They didn't cuss. They weren't disrespectful. And I just thought, that's a good testimony. That even when I, you know, I think I still might be embarrassed that Chris heard some of the things he heard, but. I don't even remember what they were. I don't either. We still love each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you can have that. Yep. This isn't an act. Nope. This is the real deal. This is, this, this is love. I'm not saying this is the definition of everybody's love. No. But this is the definition of what happiness, joy. I'm telling you, we have times that are tough, but I'm telling you. He can be annoying. <clears throat> But we, and ultimately, at the end of the day, young people, we want this for you. Right. Not exactly, you know, what we have, because we're all different people. But that threefold cord, I mean, that is going to get you there and get you through it every single time. A good man, ladies, and God. And for Boys, guys. Let me just be very clear. A good lady and God. Yep. Let me leave you with this. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. You don't need to go there. I'll just read it. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. That they which have been, or that believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. I want to tell you on this Sunday afternoon, I'm not ashamed of being careful. It's made the difference. I'm not sorry that we were careful. It's made all the difference. Amen. Our relationship, our walk with God, our raising of our children was based at the very foundational blocks of our dating and our relationship. And I'm not ashamed of being careful. To them that believe in God, that you would be careful That's right. in your dating. I wish I could come up with some sort of clever thing to take it back to photography. But you can remake your dating life. Yeah. Some of you may need to break up today. I know that's a hard thing. But some of you need to break it off. Don't do it through a text message. That's rude. Be face, a man or a woman and face up. FaceTime them, maybe, is what you need if to do. If it's far away. You know, I, we understand distance. But listen, some of you need to remake your relationship. Amen. Let's pray. I feel like praying, so we're going to pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for these young people. We pray for their spouses right now. Yes, amen. Whoever they may be, whether they be in this room or uh, at some tr distant church far away. Lord, we pr I pray for each and every one of these young men that they would find a good wife, 
that they would date right, that they'd marry right, that they'd live right, that they'd raise children right, and that one day that they would die right. Yes, I pray the same for our young ladies. Dear Lord, we pray that you would put a hedge of protection around their dating life. Help them to make good decisions. Help them not to just base the relationship on the ways of this world, but rather seek God in every aspect. Dear Lord, we pray for this convention and all those that are, are, are helping and, and working this great operation with the Central Pennsylvania Youth Convention. May you richly bless this church and the congregation that's put this thing on. Lord, we pray that you would bless the rest of the service. And Lord, we thank you for the good messages of your servant, Brother Rollin Mitchell. <laughs> Lord, he's been good. Good preacher for us this week, and we pray that you would continue to help him in this evening service tonight. Oh, what a joy it is to serve you. Oh, what a joy it is to be united with thee, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.